so after the burials, the band is called Berserker. But I wonder why they have the picture of periphery stuff there. Maybe, it's maybe oh, it's Sumerian Records. That's why. Oh, good on them. Good on you, Sumerian Records. Nice little thumbnail. Made it all kind of fit together. I'm assuming that Sumerian Records also believes that these guys grouped together in their composition skills. Or maybe this was something that they did. Oh, this is 12 years ago. Okay. So I don't know what the... Uh, let's do this. Blah, blah, blah. I talk too much. <laughs> Wow, listen to that bass tone. I got to stop this for a second. Oh, by the way, um, Goodman42, first of all, thanks for uh, coming by and saying hey. So apparently uh, Justin Lowe had passed away. Um, and how, how many guitar players were in this band? Uh, was it just him or uh, was he one of a pair of musicians and composers that were on this? Um, this this is like where I go, this is where I go like, Psh! when I go back, I'm sorry, because it's still in my head from the earlier, you know, part one of this stream about how Ben Shapiro had said that rock was a degradation of this, of this, of that. There's so much musicianship and skill in here. I was going, come on, you know. I just, I listen to that. And I'm just going, ugh, qua. Anyhow, I don't want to, I don't want to deflate the energy of listening to this and, and go in that direction. So let me, let me recover from that. What incredible riff playing, and back and forth melodic and harmonic um, that's happening here outside of the riff that's going on there. And of course the blast beat and the drummer's absolutely killing it. I love where the vocals are placed in the mix on this. Okay, here we go again. Another example I was talking about in part one, about how the vocalists and these kind of performances, they may not have any tonal value in the spectrum of musicality, but they definitely have powerful performance value. You know, and it's also the visceral ball busting bottom end of where those energy and the lyrics are coming from. So that sound may not, obviously is not preferable to a high percentage of people who listen to music, but for the years that I've been listening to, where I begin to really understand uh, outside of the performance part of what that growling and, and shredding of the vocals is, is the importance of where in the mix that is. So you got something that's so ball bastic, blowing, blowing smokes around, circles around everything, energetic wise speed wise musician wise that that is actually more of a straightforward staple you have everything going and he's just you know what i'm saying and that's actually kind of the zip line of the track for me that i can kind of rely on to be a solid staple through the track Love the harmony on that, man. Kind of neoclassical fit. Ah, that bass tone is fantastic. 
There's neoclassical right there. I love these breakdowns. He kind of gave us a kick in the swing here. Oh, I love that. Gotta stop. Love how they broke into that breakdown. It was a shuffle, kind of a shuffle vibe, if I'm right. This was felt like. Uh, composer set me straight if I'm wrong. Um, so that automatically changes changed the energy. You know, has that cool little shuffle kind of vibe to it. But there was so much energy piled on by the musicians, you know, uh, with their opening uh, compositions and uh, performance, that 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 lower bending note. Um, melodic passage was was a breath of fresh air, but by no stretch of the imagination was a lightening up of the power, you know, in the people's elbow and the throat approach to the track. But it was a great shift in the energy and the dynamics. I loved it. I love that. Oh, no. okay, no, no. that, one, that one. Thank you, hi hat, keeping me straight. on those zeros. Last beat. Damn boy. Uh, can I tell you something really quick about those blast beats? I, I don't know. I've never, as a drummer, when I was younger, that stuff didn't exist, and that kind of playing didn't exist. You know, my 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 pinnacle of listening was you know Rush and Zeppelin, and then some jazz fusion like Weather Report. And I had an eclectic, you know, uh, surrounding of influences when I was a young drummer. But n nowadays, it's a whole different beast, which is great. It's wonderful to watch everybody evolve. But that blast beat thing, when the left hand, or depending what hand you are as a drummer, is. Ding, 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 to keep it so consistent, to be relaxed, and you know that takes that takes hours upon hours in wood shedding to get that correct. Well, you know what I loved about what I just heard. This is going, and the right hand is just going, dang, dang, dang. You know, he's just keeping the quarters. 
still yet. I mean, that stuff is just mind numbing for me. You know, absolutely freaking mind numbing. And uh, it, it was just like, I, I loved every bit of it. Hard AF, sounding of a track, but you know, uh, thank you so much for that. All right, let's do this. Uh, the man that I was not by fit for an autopsy. Very interesting name of a band. I need a breather. Love the opening of the track. Very ambient, but very dark, very mystical. Uh, kind of like gives you that like smoky chill up the back of your spine kind of vibe. Um, so obviously I've never heard this band, so I'm not sure what I'm you know getting into, except people are saying it's gonna, has a Gojira kind of vibe to it, or they are fans of Gojira or influenced. And um, you know, that opening with the very unique guitar, giving us that ambience and stuff like that. Once we started getting into the darker and the heaviness of it with the growling and stuff, I was like, okay, good. Now we got the guitars powering in. And at that point, I was going, okay, we're banging now. But I was waiting for what I consider the Gojira kind of uh, thumbprint of influence. And to me, a lot of that has to do with just super rich, thick, layered guitars that, that span the spectrum of panning. You know, could be six tracks going one, two, three, four, five, six just for that big wall of sound. I was like, okay, these guys are a little subdued. Then I heard the arrangements that were popping in and out, which were the chugs that came in probably about four, four bars later. Boom, boom, boom. boom, boom. And it was so unique because those chugs were positioned in a place in the mix where it sounded like when the chugs came in, it almost sounded like, this is remember visual me, old engineer and everything. It almost sounded like it took precedence in a compression setting so that it it became forward life and as soon as the chug was over it would almost kind of dip in and out and it was so freaking powerful man i love every bit of that and then this last section i like that after dun, 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 every two bars their, their riff turnaround we we'll freaking love that <laughs> I love it. 
zero 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 zero. There it is again. Uh, 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 uh. Love the uh, drum engineering on this is great. I love the lower toms. Man, what a great sound of those low toms. I love these throwing back and forth that behind all this darkness and heaviness, they have that really great sense of ambience in their production with the tones of the, you know, whatever they're putting behind it. You know, they're not trying to get away with anything. They're obviously shoving that stuff up in your face, meaning like it's not ambience that they're sneaking behind it. They're just to, just to kind of add as maybe just kind of a glassy layer to this heaviness and stuff. They're definitely not shy about using their ambience on that. And yes, I agree with you. Who said it uh, about the engineering is absolutely mind numbing. Yes, it definitely has Doom vibes for sure. Kill Doom, I like that. Oh, man, have I been going yo-yo on this journey you guys have taken me between styles of music and stuff. And so far, I kind of like the fact that we've done some bands and uh, some, you know, uh, songs and music and stuff in between uh, some of the gaming stuff. But this was a banger, and thank you, uh, M.M., uh, for those suggestions, absolutely mind numbing. And this was bone crushing. This one, that, that, that for me, because you know, I latch on to these other things, you know. So the fact that they have that kind of scary, kind of 
I hate to say it because it's high. Haunting doesn't necessarily mean that they're high notes. I mean, it could be anything, I guess. It's, it's up to the, the listener, but that da, da, sorry, I freaking da, da, an octave higher. This gave that little edge of like, it was already dark and heavy. And if you can imagine, like, what would you give for an edge of a little more uncomfort or discomfort? It would be that line, you know. <laughs> 